Hey guys, it's Ernesto and welcome back. Um, so tonight, I'm not gonna jump straight into it like I usually do. I just wanna test to make sure that audio is good. Um, I know the video might be a little bit off, but I just wanna figure out if the audio is good. So if you don't mind, you know, drop in a comment in uh, the comment section and just letting me know if the audio is coming through great. Um, so just let me know if, if it's choppy or anything like that, please let me know. So while you do that, audio is fine. So thank you, James, I appreciate that. And Antoine, if you have your audio up, if you could turn it down on the, on the broadcast, cause I could hear that. <laughs> All right, so awesome. So now that the audio is good, uh, awesome. Everything sounds great. I know the video is kind of soft, but we're gonna have to go with that because that brand new setup that I had last night, it just wasn't uh, working out great. So we're gonna have to stick with this one. All right, so thank you guys for joining us. So this is another uh, episode. This is episode number four of Talking Business. So tonight we're gonna be talking with our special guest, Antoine Jones. Uh, he's going to be telling us all about marketing from a real uh, business owner. He's been doing this for a while, and he's going to give us his tips and strategies on how to you know, market our business. Um, I'll tell you all about him in a minute, but I just want to basically go through some basic housekeeping um, items before we get started. So first of all, I want to let you know that this channel, this YouTube channel, um, it's primarily focused on four things. At least I try to break it down into four things. First of all, we try to focus on lighting, posing, composition, and post-production. So those are the types of videos that you will find on this YouTube channel. Now there's two spe specific uh, special, there's two special broadcasts that I do, two live broadcasts that I do. Uh, one is called the Monday Critique, which is basically we review two images from the uh, the, from the YouTube community, from the subscribers. Um, so we do that every Monday and then we do this special broadcast, uh, talk in business where I sit down and I talk to business owners and they give us insight into how they run their business and give us tips and tricks and how we can, you know, improve upon our own businesses. So these are the two best, two special broadcasts that I do and the, all the other videos that we do. So if you're looking for those types of videos, that's the type of stuff that you will find on this channel. So if this is your first time here, welcome. I appreciate you uh, watching the broadcast. And if you don't mind, hit that you know subscribe button if you haven't already. All right, so another thing that I wanted to tell you guys is that next week um, I will be in New York, so therefore I won't be able to do a broadcast. So next week we will be off. So no live broadcast for next week. So no Monday critique and no talking business for next week. But the following week, we'll, we'll, we, <laughs> we will be back and we'll be talking to Jeff um, all about how to acquire clients. So client acquisition, we're going to talk all about that. So join us back on uh, Tuesday, the 23rd, where we're going to talk to Jeff from a marketing, from a, from a wedding uh, photographer perspective. He's going to talk about how to acquire uh, those wedding clients. Um, so join us and also we're going to still have a Monday critique, which is, um, going to be on the 22nd. Uh, we're going to have, I still haven't secured this, this guest yet, but James, you did an awesome job in trying to, uh, get this set up. And I think you know who I'm talking about, but I'm still trying to make sure that she's, uh, totally on board. She says she is, but I just want to make sure she is. <laughs> All right. So that being said, uh, so those are the basic house housekeeping things that I wanted to get out of the way. Um, I won't go into the following weeks, but we have other shows in the following weeks, but I just don't want to jump ahead yet. But those are the basic fundamentals that I wanted to get out of the way. So now I'm going to jump into our wonderful guest that we have. So I'm just going to read a couple of things um, about him and I'll show up his website while I'm doing this so that you guys can get an insight into who you are about to uh, hear from. So let me switch to my desktop here. All right. So Dwayne Jones, so that's his name. Uh, he's a native uh, Youngston, Ohio, uh, is best known for professional photography. Over the past decades, Jones has established himself as a force in commercial photography, fashion photography, sports and event photography. Throughout his career, 
Jones has been nominated for and Jones received several awards, including this year's nominations for ATL's Hottest Photographer. And we're going to get into that because that's a significant accomplishment. Uh, and, and you're going to find out why that is. Uh, Dwayne received his degree in business administration with concentration in marketing and management from Fayetteville State University. And also obtained his teaching uh, license in marketing from that institution. John taught marketing at his high school level for several, for nearly six years before diving into photography full time. Since then, Jones has evolved his brand to not only include photography, but also marketing, speaking, advertising, brand consulting, fashion, and event uh, production, writing, and more. So he's basically doing a lot, <laughs> which is one of the things that interests me with, uh, with Dwayne. This year, Jones is set to release an online talk show on the Swank, uh, Swank Broadcast Network, a talk show based web TV station where Jones will headline the jo uh, Dwayne Jones Live. Jones is a single father, friend, colleague, confidant, and mentor. That's a lot, man. That's a lot, James. You have a lot going on there, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> What is up? What's going on? Nothing much, man. Look, we're taking some time off to, to talk to you, and uh, and I'm excited, man. I was, I was really appreciative of uh, this opportunity, man. It's, 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 and, you know, we talked for we talked for about two hours the other day, so, you know, this is some topics that are really, you know, close to my heart and, um, you know, something I'm living, so I can, I can speak on it like I used to tell my students when I'm teaching. I wasn't just a math teacher. Or you know, a gym teacher, you know, the, the math teacher wasn't doing math and the science teacher wasn't a scientist, but I was a business teacher and I was actually doing business every day. Um, so when I came into the classroom, I had real applicable experience that I, the book says this, but I tried this yesterday at a gig and it didn't work. And, um, and that's where we're at right now. Well, I, I think you have uh, an amazing story in the sense that, um, well, let's just start from, you know, from the, the beginning, you know where basically uh, in your bio, you talked about you being a high school teacher and you right. were doing that for quite some time. Um, I guess what made you transition out of the teaching to go into photography full time? Uh, it, it was several different things, but uh, money was definitely one. <laughs> um, and then uh, really the opportunity to, to work for yourself. Uh, and, and if you can do it, I mean, I recommend that. And this, this is especially the way the world is moving towards now. If you can find an opportunity to do something that you love to do and get paid to do it, then that's my suggestion to do it. Um, I was just wasn't happy at my job, yo. And, and like I tell people now, like, I'm never going to fire myself. Uh, I, I can't be I can't technically be late. You know, I, I can't. I mean, I don't smoke or drink or anything like that, but I can't. I'm not going to fail a drug test. I'm not going to, uh, you know write myself up. I'm going to do 100% best. And the best I can do is that directly correlates to what I get paid. Um, in the other job, when you're working for somebody else, you might be the greatest employee there and still be in the same position for 20 years, um, which is kind of where I would have been. You know, at the end of the day, I was the lowest in the, my totem pole as a teacher. So I never would have really, you know, you can't really get a raise as a teacher. It just happens. You know, it does. It's not really a performance based thing. So, you know, it, it was just the time for me to go. Got it. Let me ask you a question. The well, sidebar really quick. The audio that's coming from your side is it from? I don't know because I don't have any. Hang on, let me make what? sure. It's... Hang on, let me make sure it's for me. Yeah, because I don't have anything on on this end. Oh, I know. Never mind. It's me. Hang on. Gotcha. Hang on. I don't know. I thought it was like. I have too many damn windows open. That's the problem. Right. That's it. That's it. <laughs> All right. So now that I eliminate that feedback, it's like it was in my ear. I was like, it was very distracting. Um, so I'm happy actually we made this little, um, inter interjection here because I did make one. I didn't um, let you guys know one thing, which is the viewers out there. Uh, if you do have any questions, I mean, I have a couple of questions for uh, Antoine and once I ask those questions obviously we'll go to you guys and we address all your questions but the way you would do that is if you drop your questions in the chat 
you know, just put the question in front of your questions. I know it's a question. And then when I come back to uh, the chat, I'll be able to scroll through and select those questions that you guys may have uh, for Antoine, and then we'll go from there. So, so once you made that transition um, into photography, how, how, how long ago was that to full-time? Wow, uh, to full-time, even though I was, I was already now. So April 3rd would be 13 years in. Um, so, I mean, I've technically been doing full-time photography for most of those 13 years, but I had a full-time job, too. So I was working like a 1,000 hours a week. Uh, but it's been, what, four and a half years? Yeah, four and a half years that I've been totally, totally a thousand percent photography and all the other stuff I do. Man, that is a, I think that's a pretty, pretty good thing to be in, especially when you're saying you can't fire yourself. That is an right, awesome right. position to be in. So tonight we wanted to focus on um, marketing. And I think one of the things that really, really interests me about your story is that, well, I'll let you describe it. What, how, how would you describe Fayetteville uh, North Carolina. Um, it's it's an interesting place uh, to to start. I mean, any business, let alone photography. Uh, it's a very transient town, so you have the issue of okay. Even though it's hard to get clients, especially in photography, range, because there's a million photographers, and there and, and, and rightfully so, there is some amazing talent in Fayetteville. I, I mean, I have to say that there are some amazing photographers and videographers and fashion professionals as, as a whole in Fayetteville. Um, so you have that competition there. Um, I want to say that everybody likes to work with each other, but I mean, maybe they just don't like to work with me. I, I don't know, but I mean, I was always kind of the loner. Um, and then you have the whole issue of it being a military town. So it's very transient. Um, so you can have the greatest customer forever and then next thing you know they're PCS and they're they're relocated to Hawaii or Fort Benning or you know South Carolina and North, you know New York so that's always been a challenge in that area just I don't think everybody wants it to succeed it's a level of success it's like a plateau if ever like if you if you're this successful you're cool but if you try to go above that then you're not necessarily as cool um so it took me a while uh to even plug into the whole the whole Fayetteville market, and I was, and that part of that was my fault too. So, would you, what would you say the Fayetteville market is? Uh, I guess for your type of business, photography related business, uh, what would you say the the market is there as far as um, you know, people have an appetite to spend money there? Do you think for like photography? Um, I mean, it's money everywhere. So I think that uh, as a whole, I may I may not have done the best job at it, but. I mean, it's money there. It just, again, like we said, when we're talking about marketing and all that, you have to find creative avenues to capture that money. Um, and uh, it's a challenge there because, again, it's, it's smaller because I'm in Atlanta now. So Atlanta's bigger. Okay, you, you, you know you're going to have competition here, and that's cool, but there's, there's a million people here as well. So competition may not seem as, as relevant here as it is there when you have just as much competition, but it's 10 times smaller. Um, so what 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 distinguishes you from everybody else is something that I really really take pride in, in, in focusing on. Um, because remember, I, I was kind of like you. We talked about it. I'm kind of quiet. I was kind of quiet. You know, I'll just take pictures, laugh, giggle. That was my that was my motto forever, man. When I was really just playing around, man, laugh, giggle, take good pictures, and go home. That was my thing. I would just snap, snap, snap. Man, I had other stuff going on, so it was like, hey, I'm not gonna linger around. I'm not high fiving everybody. Hey, I'm Jones. I'm this big guy photographer. I didn't do none of that. I just took some great pictures and I, I was gone. I mean, I, you know, shake everybody's hand and I'd be at events like at the end of the event. I'm like, Oh, what's your name? I'm like, Oh, I'm Dwayne or I'm Antoine. They're like, Oh, you're Antoine. I mean, yeah, they didn't even know who I was. I mean, they, just, they knew of my work because, you know, I tried the best, my best to put out the best possible work I could, but they didn't know me. So, you know, now I'm in the transitional phase of getting, you know, the last two years I was in favor, it was really like getting out a little more and let people know who I am. Um, and then they'll see the personality and that goes a long way as well, which we'll, we'll talk about once we jump into all this marketing hoopla. Yeah. So, uh, so basically, like you said, you transitioned into Atlanta. So what, what made you want to leave Fayetteville? Like, was there a plateau point that says, okay, you know, it's time to make the move or you just felt like uh, Atlanta had like a bigger market and that's probably where you need to be. And, and when did you make that transition? Yeah, some of both. Um, 
it, it was like I felt like I couldn't grow anymore. And, and again, and I'm, I'm going to say this to all professionals, and it doesn't matter what business you are. And we'll touch on photography, but pretty much everything I say today is going to kind of be like universal. Um, people respect you the least where you lay your head. And, and you can just take that to the bank. You can cash it. It is a million dollar check. So you have to realize that when you're growing a, a business anywhere is that you're going to get the least amount of respect where you where you base at. Um, so I felt that I was in the Fayetteville market for like 10 years. I thought I kind of maxed out my level of growth uh, based upon what I was trying to do. Um, so I did it the smartest way I could. I, mean, I was already going to Charlotte, you know, and I love Charlotte. Charlotte fashion industry is growing because it's like people are moving up. But I thought Charlotte was a lateral move for me. It, it was only two hours away. I was always there anyway. People thought I lived there because I was there, you know, two, three days a week anyway. So it was a lateral move for me. So Atlanta, big city, bigger city. I was like, OK, let me try. My sister was there. That helped, um, you know, families here. So it, it was a little bit smarter of a move for me to move somewhere where I can get, you know, I'm, I'm a single dad, too. So I had to th- consider my daughter and get her around, you know, a, a lady and such my sister and my girlfriend to, to get her a little bit more acclimated as well. But yeah, the more the most positive point was trying to get the opportunity to be in a bigger market. And I didn't care who was who was here. If it was a zillion photographers here, like I said, it's a zillion photographers in Fayetteville as well. So, you know, I'm gonna do my brand and I'm gonna grow at my pace and um and then show people what I can do. So how did you transform your in your, your business, I don't know if it, it will be considered a transformation, but basically you, you, you know, you had a stable business in Fayetteville and right. then you then transitioned into Atlanta. Like, how did you start, you know, putting, um, you know, the, the checks in place to make sure that, you know, you basically ramp up your business back to the level that it needed to be with respect to how it was in Fayetteville or better? I mean, it, it's, it was a total grind. I mean, I mean like, locked and loaded um grind mode i was here again and again and i and i did the smartest thing i could possibly do i I started visiting here you know like once a quarter twice a quarter uh for about a year and a half before i moved down so people kind of knew who i was and my sister's in fashion so i kind of had a little leg up on that so i was going to fashion events kind of dropping my head in hey i'm moving down soon need to link up i'm a social media junkie so i'm always on social media uh and I don't I don't take it to the bank of social media is a cure all. But uh, social media is important to my, in my business um, for what we do. And uh, it's helped me to grow. Um, so people are finding me and and really doing a lot of, a lot of things that. Uh, you know, once you see somebody doing something, you just got to jump in. man. Oh, if it's somebody that you like, I mean, I'm, I research people. I mean, I'm I see trends on social media because, I mean, everything's coming through my 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 timeline. So. I'm like, okay, that person's doing this, that person's doing that. This is somebody that I want to work with. This is somebody whose brand seems to align with my brand. Then you approach those people and you can't be afraid to approach them and say, hey, man, I'm Jones. I've been doing this for a while. I mean, I'm, you know, I got all kinds of other challenges too because I look like a big kid. So, you know, that's a challenge I kind of have to work through as well. Uh, but when people see my work and see, you know, how serious I am, how passionate I am about what I do, then, you know, you have to work through some of those, uh, some of those, uh, you know, disadvantages that we may have. I mean, I'm a black dude, so I mean, that that, that could be a disadvantage. I'm a single dad, that could be a disadvantage. You know, I look young, so people sometimes don't take me seriously until I start talking and, and really getting them to understand, okay, I'm not a kid. I mean, and, and I had to do that when I was a teacher. First day of class, sit down. Hey, I'm not a 21-year-old teeny bobber that just got out of college. I'm an old dude. You know, even though I look young, I'm, I'll play with you, help you out, but I mean, we're about business, so let's get it done. Totally hear that. Now, so you transition to Atlanta, you basically build your business back up by networking, showing your face, um, you know, aligning your brand with other people's brand and, and, you know, making yourself known. And that's basically how you got yourself back up. So how did you get yourself in within that year to become like ATL's hottest uh, photographer? Uh, man, I think it's a dream. It's, it's a combination of... Uh putting in so much hard work for so long. And, and, and that's one of my like number three key points in, in the whole like beginning phase of the marketing thing is that I think over the years I've established myself as this is what you get from Jones. You know, you're going to get, you're going to get this, 
this level of quality. You're going to get this level of creativity. He's going to be cool. He ain't a creeper dude because, I mean, that's the stigma that photographers get. So you got to kind of be worried about that when you go into the to, – I mean, photographers are creepy. All the dude photographers try to sleep with all the models and all that stuff. And I've never been that dude. I just want great pictures. I want you to enjoy yourself. Like the experience to me is, is like key. Like so you're selling you before they get to products, before they get to whatever you're selling. I mean, the key is you. So does a personality make people want to come back? You know, if you make a mistake, are you going to own up to it? I mean, like everybody doesn't like me. I made my, my fair share of mistakes, but I try to own up to any mistakes I made. And, you know, try to do whatever I can to either retain or get, you know, or at least have that client say, you know what? He messed up, but he did whatever he could do. So that that's all in my spiel. Um, and I put out some of the greatest work I think I possibly put out in my 13 years in this last year. Um, so it was it was really amazing, you know, testament to win an award in the city that I just got to. Because, um, I mean, one 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 good customer, we always say, could change your whole life. For us, one good image could uh, could change your whole career. And I got that image at the beginning of the year from a, a fluke shoot. And that kind of just propelled me into a whole nother level. And I was already doing pretty good. But in the new city, I got that one picture that just took off. And I've been kind of soaring since then. Now people are like, oh, man, that's the dude that did that picture. When, you, when you're known by one picture, like, oh, yeah, I've seen that picture before. That's when you know, like, OK, things are starting to really, really shape up to where you need to be. Um, so now people are really watching now. Oh, that's that's good, man. Congratulations, because I think that's uh, that's awesome to, to actually, you know, leave um, some place that you were already established to go to a brand new place to start up a brand new business. And on top of that, to able to, you know, get that award. I think that's a, a great testament. Um, so let's get into the, the meat and potatoes of the marketing. But before I. Um, okay. Before I um, go into like, you know, the, the actual steps that you're going to give us, uh, I just want to, you know, figure out from before we actually, you know, pay for any marketing or actually do the marketing. I wanted to just uh, get some basic information before we do that or you provide some basic advice on how to do that. Uh, okay. so, so basically, before anyone start to think about marketing. Um, do you think they should really understand like their business before they actually say, OK, I'm going to start marketing? So in other words, uh, do they need to understand their vision and passion um, for their business in order to start the, the marketing process? Yeah, I mean, I think that's the number. Yeah, again, first, first, you need to understand you. And I think that's what that's what's left out of a lot of, of, of books is that you need to understand yourself first. So you need to really do a self-evaluation of what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses. And, and that's a marketing term called SWOT analysis. You measure your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. That's like one of the most foundational things in marketing. And we used to do this. Now, this is the funny part. We used to do this when we, when we, we talked about dating a girl when we were like in elementary school or high school. It's like, and, and, and this goes for everything. And this is really, really true. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, right? But when you were little, it was a list. I said, okay, should I do this? Write down on this side all the pros and cons. You know, write down all the pros on this side, all the cons on this side. If you have more pros than cons, for the most part, then it, 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 it should be a sound business decision or sound decision. Should I date her? Uh, she does this. She does this. She does this. She does this. She doesn't do this. She doesn't do that. She does, okay, you got more cons. You might need to you might need to lay off that for a while. That's every business decision you make. Should I go into this? Should I buy this new camera? Uh, well. It's 30 megapixels, great. Uh, it shoots seven frames a second, great. Uh, but it's three thousand dollars, and the camera you just bought last year was two grand. It's not really that much different. Ah, uh, maybe I should wait. That that's pretty much what we sh we should do. But we should do that with ourselves first. If you know that you don't like being around people or talking to people or interacting with people, photography may not be the job for you because that's all you do. Um, you got you got a a jealous spouse, yeah. You may not want to be a photographer. I'm around women 99.8% of the time. If I had a jealous spouse, girlfriend, whatever like that, it would be kind of hard to navigate um, in this profession for what I do in fashion. I mean, it's 99% women. And, and for the most part, it's like 85% females in any form of photography anyway, unless you're doing sports. And that's still, you know, 50-50 at this point. So once you know yourself, then you can get into knowing your product um, and whatever that is. You need to know some specific and you don't have to be necessarily book 
smart about it, but you need to know who you want your client to be, how much they make, uh, where they're at, and uh, you know what are their trends. And once you get to that, you know we call it the four P's of marketing. Once you get at your product, your price, which is important, your place is wherever you're going to be at, and then you know your distribution, how you're going to get it to people, then you're good. You're like right in the right in the marketing aspect right there because it's just four it's four basic things, but it all comes off of your product. If your product's not tip top notch, then I mean you could win, you couldn't. But you know I know people that are succeeding have a subpar product, but for the most part. Your product is the most important thing that you put out, and everybody's going to know you by that. Totally agree. I think you touched on some of the points I wanted to cover, which was like, um, like how do you define um, your your customers? Like before, um, before you start marketing, right? Once you identify that, okay, um, I have the right vision, I have the right passion uh, for my business. Um, so now, once you identify that, like, what what advice or how would you tell someone to say, okay, this is how you need to define uh, your customers. Because if you, if you don't have a clear definition of who your customer is, right. who, who you market into. Right. And, and that's where you go into your research on what you want to do. Um, example, I've never been an eye candy photographer. That's just something that didn't interest me. I was married when I started photography. So that was something I shot away from because I just didn't want you know, my wife at the time to have to deal with that mentally. Um, but you know, we're in a military town. So boudoir, eye candy, that can go a long way in military town because, you know, people want to send stuff over to the significant others. They're in Afghanistan, Iraq, getting shot at and all that. So send them something elegant or sexy. It's something that would be a good market in Fayetteville. That's the automatic trigger. We're in Fayetteville, military people. So, you know, family portraits are going to be big. People get married all the time, whether it be small or big weddings. Um, those are things that you should know or kind of research from your area or wherever you're going to be marketing to wherever you're going to set up shop at or go to, you need to do some research. And I mean, I've tried to do that, you know, for to my whole career. Yeah. Well, that's good. Um, so I guess, um, should you care, um, from, from a business perspective, should you care about your competitors? Uh, do you study like their marketing, uh, practices, uh, before you actually start implementing your own? Uh, no, I mean, because, you know, people are all different. So what, what may work for you may not necessarily work for, you know, the next person. Like my mentor, I mean, it's two photographers in the Fable studio. I still have my studio there. Um, and my mentor is um, is a, one of the best wedding photographers in town. So I look at him, I look at his work, and we have we have very, 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 very work. Like his work is totally different than mine, mine's totally different than his. And we, we can ping off each other off that. Do we share a market? Not really, because we have totally different uh, brands. Now, me, I didn't ever want to compare myself to local people. And there is some great people that I can name. But, you know, since we're focusing on us right now, I mean, I won't necessarily drop names on. But there, like I said, there is some great talent in Fayetteville. And there's some great talent in Atlanta, obviously. You know, it's celebrity photographers everywhere here. So, but my thing was, is I'm always, I'm always aiming for like an unattainable goal. Uh, like I compare my work to like Essence Magazine or, or you know, Jet or some of these other like national or international magazines. And that, that pushes me because I know that with the equipment I have, that I'll never be able to attain that level of photography with what I have. But I, that, that keeps me not being complacent. Uh, I'm always, always, always looking at other magazines, looking at, you know, famous photographers around the world, like, man, I could, I can do my best to, to try to capture what they're capturing. And I do pretty darn good uh, for what I do to capture what I'm trying to capture that I create in my mind. But I've never said, you know, I'm going to compare myself to Ernesto, you know, because he's in Fayetteville area and we're, we're competing with each other. I, I didn't, I never did that because I didn't ever want to get to a point where, okay, now I feel like I'm as good as Ernesto. And then boom, now I'm just, I've arrived. You know I mean, it, it's still, it's still too much to do to ever feel like you've ever arrived. When you feel like you arrived, that's when all these little kids with cameras that could probably take just as good a picture with their, you know, their point and shoot are coming along because they're they're into technology. So I have unattainable goals, but that's a goal that I can obtain if that makes any sense. You know, I, I'm, I know I'm going to be on the cover of a of a, a major magazine one day, 
I know one day I'm going to be shooting with a $20,000 camera and a $40,000 light set up with 25 assistants and all that. But for now, I'm still trying to hit that with a $2,000 camera <laughs> and no assistant and my stuff falling all over the place. And I'm trying to win, stop blowing it and all that. My equipment's all broke up. But that, that's a goal to me because that keeps me sharp. That, that's uh, good advice. Um, so I guess... This is one of those questions whenever I go into like a like a job interview or something like that. Um, it's kind of like one of those questions that always get you. Uh, uh, but I guess and I guess for me personally as well, uh, do you have to like um, trying to crap this question properly? Do you have to answer the question of um, what makes your product and services superior than uh, your competitors or? Like, do you have to define that? Because when someone, when you get a client, right, and right. a client comes up to you and say, "Look, okay, I'm I'm looking to book you, but you know, John Doe down the block, he's you know doing blah blah blah, you know, do you have to then you know come up with a way to then define why is it that you, your brand, your photography is is is, is superior than the other ones?" No, I, I don't do that anymore. Um, and, and that's not to say that I don't need the money because I am a single dad, but I, I don't I don't nickel and dime with people anymore. And, and that's something that helps you sleep better at night is to, just to stop nickel and dime, man. Uh, if, if people want you, they want you. All you can do is put out the best possible work you can, treat people the right way. And you know, what God has for you is for you. So I can't I can't change your mind. If you if you already made up your mind, you're going with Johnny down the street. You're just on the phone trying to convince yourself not to use Johnny, then I'm already lost. Uh, I, I, don't, I, I don't really deal with that. I'll tell people from, from the jump, uh, I'm a great photographer. Am I the best? I don't know. That depends on what style you're looking for. Am I the cheapest? Probably not. So if you're calling me, most people call on that price point. They, they have a certain price level that they're just trying to get under or they don't want to go past that. So they're looking for the best thing for the lowest price. I don't really debate about that anymore. I mean, this is what I charge. You know, I've been doing this for too long you know, to, to kind of nickel and dime anymore and, and not to say that I don't do stuff for free or I don't do stuff for discounted rates at, at times here and there. But I, I I love what I do and I feel like the experience alone, you know, that's what separates me. So they asked me about my product. I'm like, man, the product's cool. I mean, I guess you can find anybody to take pictures, but this experience you're going to have is going to be what, what, what sets me apart. I think that people are going to say, man, you all had like the greatest time ever or, or when people walk away, man, my kids never smiled in pictures before or, you know, we had the greatest time. I could never get my husband to smile in picture before. That's the stuff I'm looking for. And that's the stuff that people, you know, they talk, they talk about you. And then by the time the next person gets to you, all that selling stuff is kind of out the door. Um, and I, I don't really sell as much anymore because people usually know of me or they will refer to me. So it's just kind of the do I match their budget? And do I match what they're trying to do? And then we go from there. Not necessarily. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to choose between you and Derek Blanks because that's one of the biggest, you know, fashion photographers down here. Or Nathan Piercy. Yeah, I know my competition. Uh, but still, at the end of the day, nobody's going to call you and say that, you know, I'm deciding between you and Derek Blanks. You know, what you got? Nah. I mean, that's just do the best you can do. And that's all you can do. And then you'll sleep better at night. Yeah. Uh, so basically what you're saying is, um, Product is important. Everybody pushes a product or in, let's say in your similar market, you know, they push the same product photography to, in this case. Uh, but what you're basically uh, pushing more than just the product is your, the, the service that your business provide and uh, the experience that your business provides. So those are your two um, commodities that uh, you push out there to your, to your, to your clients. Right and hoping that they will then push that out to the rest of your to potential clients and then yeah. refer you. Right. So, Cause, man, we, we have social media and all that stuff. But like I said, that's great. But, I mean, word of mouth is still going to be your number one moneymaker. I mean, word of mouth is probably 80% of your business, and then social media is 15, and then just the luck of the draw of, you know, people stopping by or bumping into you or you seeing them at an event or something like that is the other, you know, 5%. Yeah, that's true. So branding is something that uh, everybody always talk about when it comes to to business. Um, so the question I have for you is like, uh, how do you uh, brand your business? And do you think branding is important when it comes to uh, a business? 
Uh, absolutely. And that's just coming from the marketing background side. I'll always, and that's one of the reasons I've, I probably succeeded where, where others have failed. Um, it's, it's one thing I always say uh, when I'm talking to customers on the branding side, not the photography side, but I'll get to that in a second. From the photography side and from the branding side together, I always say vision Vision is visual. Like your image is the most important thing that you could possibly have in, when, in, in it pertains to marketing and or photography. Obviously, you want to take the best pictures and not your image, but like your overall package, like when people come to your website, when people look at your business card, when people see you walking around, and, and I'm, I'm kind of guilty of that sometimes because I start feeling myself every now and again, and I'm not all dressed up at every photo shoot, uh, but depending on the photo shoot, because I know like if you see my work, you know that I'll be in a tree, I'll be rolling around in the grass, we'd be in a waterfall or something like that, so it's not always conducive for me to dress up, um, but you know, image, image is absolutely positively everything and pretty much any business. Um, and that's what the barriers I have when I'm doing consulting uh, for clients is let me see your website. Let me see your social media. Let me see everything you got. And they're showing me cell phone pictures of their cakes. Uh, the website is by Wix and I have no problem with Wix, but you know, you got stuff pieced together and all this stuff, dark pictures, you know, misspelled words and all that stuff. And they're wondering why they're not getting clients, even though they have a great product is because they're missing that visual element. People, especially nowadays, I mean, look, you got one shot. It's how many photographers in Fayetteville? It's, it's probably two, 300 photographers just in Fayetteville. Um, so if they come to your website or Instagram page or they talk to you on the phone, you got like three seconds before they decide to flip the channel to somebody else. So I made it almost impossible for people just to flip by me. I mean, it was like, okay, they heard about me, cool. I, I, if you looked at my website when you pulled it up, got a brand new website and I feel so comfortable with my website because the website is sleek. It shows my images. Everything is there. You know, there's no hustle and bustle. Now customers can just go to it and bang, it's there. Social media is there, which is really important. You can almost shoot your own self in the foot with social media uh, from your, per you know, you might have a business page, but your personal page, people look at that too. And people don't realize that you can lose. It, take, it takes like three times the effort to get a customer is as it is to lose one. Um, so all that you, I made a vow to myself never to, never to, uh, to rant on social media anymore. I did that about two years ago because you might not know it, but you, I probably lost 30 clients just flipping out or having some type of fake Facebook, Twitter finger beef with somebody or, or doing something crazy because guess what? You were about to book me for a shoot. Then you see me spazzing out or talking about how sucky the world is or, I just had a bad day, so I went to social media and just flipped out, and then I lost customers that way. So image overall, not just your pictures, but how people perceive you is probably the easiest way. That's how I, that's how I get, got my success um, is that I know how to fandangle things. You know, I have products, you know, which we'll get to in that, but you know, I wanted my image to stand out. and not If you put my business cards down on the table, I wanted somebody to be like, oh, wow, because you know, it's already – 500 business cards on the table. So what made my business card different? You know, that's what I put into researching and getting it there to that point because that was a part of the visuals. Um, same thing with my pictures, you know. Photographers make a really, really, really big mistake is that they like posting, 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 posting. I don't do that. Um, why? I'll look at people's social media and go, why did I photographer, like you have, <laughs> you have the choice of what you post so why not just post your best? You don't have to post a thousand pictures. I don't ever really post behind the scene pictures or a screenshot of the back of the camera and say, okay, wait, there. no, that's not your work. And I will flip out on customers for posting unedited pictures that I took, you know, screen, screenshot and a proofing site or something like that. Like, no, I mean, I have that bold, like my proofing, my proofing instructions is like, here's the website, here's you go. Absolutely do not screenshot or repost proofs. How about because a, that's how about that's, an Instagram filter on top of your picture? Oh, uh, <laughs> I mean that that's not as bad. Uh, I don't I don't get that as much, but uh because there's only so much you could do, like unless you start adding little hearts and stuff on all that. And that doesn't mean they didn't like the picture. If they're doing all that, it doesn't mean they didn't like the picture to begin with. So you have a bigger problem than somebody putting a filter on there. But I don't I haven't really had people over filter my pictures i mean i'm trying to do crazy stuff anyway so i mean i don't think you need a filter but i have had some clients that like posted proofs or you know we got a light stand or something in the picture or something like that because they posted a proof or unedited image and i don't give unedited images that's not me 
And people go, wow, all my other photographers did that. And I'm like, well, that's cool. But let me explain this to you. Uh, and we're going off the marketing aspect. I said, have you ever, have you ever driven a car off the lot with three wheels? And they're like, no, that's stupid. I'll say it's the same way for me. I mean, I, I built a Ford car. You know, we had the metal, the tires, the rubber, the glass, and all that stuff. That's cool. Those are all individual pieces that go to my car. But at the end of the day, paint job and everything, that's when I give you the car. You, you're not saying this is Jones's car when it's only two tires on there. It's all, you know, just no windshield and all that. That's not my product. My product is the end product that, you know, I got time to edit. I got time to crop stuff out. You're, you're satisfied. I'm satisfied. That's stuff that goes to the market. Everything else is on a secure website, password protected, so it doesn't get out to the public. So one day, three years down the road, it's some weird picture because somebody, oh, I forgot I wasn't supposed to post an unedited picture. Now you got this image out there that is not you. It's only part of you, and you could lose customers like that. So I try to safeguard that. You put out the best work you possibly can all the time, and that includes you know, finished good. So branding to you just doesn't mean website, social media, business card. It also means how you present yourself physically to someone, like how you present right. yourself right now to us with a bow tie and stuff like that. Right, and, right. And this is funny because I got, you know, I got the bow tie on and the shirt and all that stuff with the hat on, but I got like some sweatpants on. But it looks good because we're marketing right now. So we've got to make it seem like we're just not sitting at home with some sweatpants on. We've got to look sharp because it's all a part of, you know, the, the process. Yeah, and I think that's, uh, that's important because sometimes people get wrapped up in, you know, the, the standard stuff, which is the website, social media, business card, letterhead, and all that good stuff. But uh, how you present yourself to someone physically, how you talk to someone, how you present yourself now on social media, like you said, that you say the wrong thing and then, you know, you might offend, you know, the wrong person. Uh, right. So, you know, you have to you have to basically have all those things in consideration when you are running a business. Um, so it's, it's very important. So let's talk about budgeting uh, for marketing. Okay. Uh, do, does one need to establish a budget um, for marketing? Like, in other words, do 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 you need to establish a, a monthly budget, an annual budget, weekly budget? Like, how do you think about it from a marketing perspective? Um, from a marketing perspective, I try to tell my clients to put aside, you know, obviously I have, you know, monthly fees and, and that's pretty much how it would go. Um, even if you were doing it on your own, you need to set aside some monies. Um, my mentors used to say, you know, set aside 20 percent, you know, save 10 percent, 20 percent for marketing. And then the other 70 percent, which you use, you know, as your you know, organizational, you know, or you, what you pay yourself, what you, you know, what else, whatever you do, buying cool stuff, because, you know, we're, we're in, the, in this pit of photography so uh, and videography, so we, we're going to spend money regardless on gadgets and all this stuff and lenses and, and, and maintenance on these goods. But, yeah, you, ha you have to put aside something. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily always going to be, you know, a set amount, but say, I need to do this because there's just certain things you need. I mean... If you looked at the history, and, and again, I follow I follow social media. If you look at the trends that are going right now with, with Instagram and Facebook, since Facebook bought out Instagram, it's like you go to your fan page and like nobody nobody sees fan pages anymore. It's like there's no traffic on you know one of my clients is a magazine. They they have like twenty thousand followers on their on their fan page and they get like two likes now. It's like all the analytics have changed for for Facebook. Um, so you have to be aware of that stuff. So now they're almost forcing you. To get little ads uh, and, and you don't have to spend a lot of money on ads and, and that's where people go wrong is that you don't have to spend a hundred dollars a week on Facebook ads you can spend seven bucks a month uh, on Facebook ads and still get you know some substance out of it um, same thing with Instagram Instagram is like blowing up right now because for us it's just images and we, we can get so much accomplished by posting the image and um, and working with other people that it, it makes it it makes it better. So marketing, you know, is, is definitely needed. You, you need to make sure that you're like I'm out of business cards right now. I'm like freaking out. Uh, I was like, I need I need more business cards because people know me by my business cards and people and I meet people all the time. And like I said, we, we got some technology in there, too. But sometimes people want that in their hand and uh, we got it. We got to be able to give it to them and we got to be able to you know do flyers, you know, depending on what your business is, sipping shops, host your own events. Uh, work with other people so you'll need a little bit of money to work with other people to do some things that you want to do so that marketing aspect is uh is key 
uh, and I will say this because I always, I always tell people this. Um, I know some amazing chefs. I know some amazing cooks, makeup artists, hairstylists, photographers, wardrobe stylists, uh, computer analysts, all that stuff. They have their own business, but they don't know jack about business. Their major wasn't business. They they love to cut hair. They love to take pictures, but they don't know anything about business. That's when you need to hire somebody like me or somebody else that will help you on your journey. You just have to be upfront when you say, this is my budget. I got $300 a month, $500 a month, $1,000 a month, but this is not my element. Like my, my client, my boutique client, she's in the military, and she owns an online boutique that she's looking for a storefront. She's not necessarily want to focus on all this stuff, and nor, nor did she learn all the stuff that goes into marketing. So this is the time that you need to hire somebody or start collecting money to hire somebody to do the stuff that you don't know because it, it, it's so much harder, you know, trying to navigate your business. And you got, you know, the first three years, most businesses that are going to fail are going to fail in the first three years. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and it's mainly because of the marketing. Where you, where you positioned yourself uh, from the beginning, uh, a lot of photographers feel that way because they position themselves as these like $25 photographers or $50 to get the disc and all the pictures on there. That this is going to kill yourself. Uh, charge what you want to charge and, and give the quality that you want to give from the jump. You may get less clients, but you get the clients that you want. And guess what? Those clients are going to refer you to clients that are in line with that as opposed to you got five thousand twenty dollar photographer, you know, twenty twenty photo shoots, and guess what? They're all gonna refer you to twenty five dollar clients because hey man, Ernesto do them twenty five dollar shoots. You you spend just as much time on a twenty five dollar shoot as a thousand dollar shoot. I promise you, um, that is a, the hardest lesson I learned is that you discount a shoot or give away a cheap shoot, you're gonna work just as hard for that little crappy shoot. As you will for a two thousand dollar customer, you know it, it just it just works out like that. People don't they don't care if you give them whatever you want to give. They want they want you know royalty if it's twenty five dollars or two thousand dollars or two million dollars. So why even entertain yourself with something that you don't feel is worth your your worth? So basically, for the as far as the marketing, I heard you say you know utilize the social media, which is Facebook, Instagram. Uh, do you? Uh, advise like any other uh, means of marketing like uh, Google AdSense or uh, what else is out there on the web? Um, yeah, if you have that, I mean, also, I mean, some type of email marketing platform, oh, you yeah, can do the cheap, yeah. the cheap one or one. And that's, that's the number one for everybody out there. Um, every training class I've gone to, whether it be for teaching or for photography, um, there's two pieces of information that are going to be the most valuable to you that you should get from every customer. Now it's three. I would say three now. One is their cell phone number. Two is their email address. And three is their social media handle. That's the, you, every customer, every customer that you should get that information. Because if you get into CRM, which is customer relationship management, on the back end, you have a customer um, and you should follow up with them. Hey, and they're telling me we had a great shoot. Man, here's a 25% off coupon or or you know the holidays coming around, so you have that you have that information that you can shoot them something to remind them because that, that's that's really the biggest the biggest loss we have is that we're looking for new customers all the time, but really the majority of our business is coming from repeat customers, and we just totally forget about them trying to chase new customers. Yeah. Um, so keep your current customers happy; they'll send you more people. You don't necessarily have to look as hard. So I follow up all the time. Hey, what you need? I'll drop something in your. Uh, your Facebook inbox now, you can start doing more with Facebook inboxes now so you can inbox them. I wouldn't say spam people to death because they'll start blocking you or unfriend you or whatever, but Facebook inbox, um, you know, Instagram DM, uh, email marketing, those are ways to follow up with your clients. Say, hey, man, how you doing? Had a great shoot with you. Uh, I remember that, you know, your daughter's about to graduate high school or something like that. I guess I do see your pictures as well. So then you're just, you're just recycling. You went from a family picture, and that, that's the whole beauty of it. You know, with families and photography is that you could do one thing and that thing could branch off into 10 million other things if you just ask for the business because they, they're they not going to just necessarily remember you all the time. Oh, yeah, he took our family pictures. I didn't know he did a little Pee Wee Sports Center or I didn't know he took dance pictures. I didn't know he did weddings. All that off a family picture, you got a, a client forever. Your kids grow up. Every phase of their life, they'll get you. Every milestone, they'll get you. They'll start telling their family and friends and that's, that's more branches. Like, you know, I did family pictures when I was in Fayetteville last week. You know, it was a hair. I mean, a makeup artist used to work with all the time, and that 
that one family session turned into a family to like four generations. So it turned into they did family pictures, both sets of parents did family pictures, and then they did one big group family picture. So we're getting business from all from four generations off of one one retained content. Remember, hey man, Jones takes pictures. I'm gonna catch him while he's in town. Great, you know that's great. So here's a uh, um, so. Before I ask this last question, because this is the last question I have, and then we're going to jump into your three um, things that we want to focus on as far as marketing is concerned. But I just wanted to remind the audience, guys, if you have any questions, because I haven't really been checking the chat, but if you have any questions, please make sure you put a question in front of the question. So when I scroll through, I could see the questions. Um, but yeah, put those questions, if any questions you have for um, our wonderful guest here, Dwayne Jones, just put that information in there. Um, so the last question I have for you is more of a, more of a tactical type uh, question. Okay. So, and I guess this will be all for all the photographers out there or anybody that's uh, out there that want to make money. Right. So mm -hmm. here's a, here's a scenario that I'm going to give you. So if I had, if I wanted to make $500 uh, at the end of this month, Okay. Uh, what are some of the practical steps that I can take today to get fast marketing results uh, by the end of this month? Uh, are Are we talking about as a brand new as a brand new business or as an established business or uh, a business that's already been operating? Well, let's say in between, like just started been operating for a couple of months. I guess that's a brand new business, I guess. Um, but anybody that wants to make really 500 bucks now, like at the, not now, but the end of the month, if they wanted to make 500 bucks at the end of this month, what can they, what, what will be the practical steps that they could take today um, to get that result at the end of the month? Uh, you're going to have to, I mean, whatever your passion is, you, you're going to have to go straight to that. Um, like I'm, I'm a fashion photographer by nature, so I will go directly to that. I would reach out to all the people that are prominent in that industry on in, in that specific market and go directly towards them. What do you need? How can I help you? What can I do? And then I will lean on, I mean, obviously lean on people that you know as well. Um, you know, you're going to know, you're going to know business professionals that need your services. Um, so, you know, I will go around to all these Mary Kay reps that I know, all these real estate agents I know, um, I, I would I would hit my circle of influence first. I don't have any family in the North in Fayetteville, or uh, really only my sister and my close family here, and girlfriend, all that here. Uh, but I would go to people that I know first. And I wouldn't say give them a sale, but you would just kind of create something that gets people in, uh, you gets you in their mind. So hey, this is what we're doing. Check out some of my new work. Or hey, you know what's going on? It, it it's basketball season right now. With the, the transition from football to basketball, so now I mean, who's doing team pictures and all that? I'm I'm, I'm like really big into that, uh, trying to find the next step before the step happens. Uh, so yeah, your circle influence is gonna be number one. Then you're gonna start going to the next level of your circle, which is you know, people that are prominent in that industry. You know whether it be hair, makeup, stylists, all that. I mean, there's a billion of them. So I mean, you're gonna catch at least one <laughs> if it's. 500 makeup artists in favor of man you can get two that need a photo shoot because they need to upgrade their website and, and then you you have to do a whole lot of education um and that's one thing again if you don't have the business acumen you need to get somebody on your team that does i know how to talk to people and get them understanding because i'm i'm not i'm not selling people stuff most of the time i'm educating them on what will make their business better and that comes off a, a whole lot more smooth than trying to sell hey, i got a 50 dollar photo shoot i got a hundred dollar photo shoot this is what i charge what i charge no uh -uh. I looked at your website. Now you know Ernesto that you got those cell phone pictures of your of your uh your shea butter. You need me to come in through and, and take some good pictures. You know, I'm more I'm more like I'm I'm more leaving it to the client at that point to say, yeah, man, my dog is kind of dark and I'm I'm not really selling. And that's when you go into your pitch. This is what I do. This is what I offer from there. So you just create a need. And again, that's your job as a photographer or your know, Mary Kay rep or makeup artist or whatever to to get people to understand the, the need for you. And once they understand that need, then you're good. All right, now all you got to do is produce. And from there, yeah, you can make $500 real quick. I mean, you can make $2 million if you really wanted to, but you got you to gotta beat the streets to 
And that's something I'm learning here that I have to get back into the cycle of. I didn't have to beat the street as much in Fayetteville anymore as I used to. But now here, I got to hit the road. Like, I'm on the phone. I'm on my cell phone. I'm emailing people. I'm inboxing people. I'm stopping by places. I'm reminding people, hey, man, remember you said you were going to talk to me? You, you got to. We're going to eat. And we need to eat, you know. So a circle of interest. So if you want to make $500 right now, hit up your circle of influence first, your friend's circle. Uh, right. Hit up your industry friends, you know, well, friends or, or business business people that you know. Um, you know, educate yourself to make sure that when you do hit up those business people that you go in there, you'd be like, you know what? I'm not here to sell you anything, but I did notice your, your website. You know, right, your yeah, your website. Anything. Yeah, your Instagram, your Instagram, man. I see you taking pictures of nails, but let me... Let me, I mean, and then you show them samples. Hopefully, you got some. Or you, I mean, and, and again, it might take a, it might take something free. I'm, I'm not a, opposed to free, uh, or trade situations. It just has to make sense at this point. Um, when we first started out, it was like, okay, let's do this because people need to know who I am, or people need. I mean, I need this for my portfolio, and you do gigs based on that. Um, now, if you know, if I'm doing something for free, it's because I want to do something creative. Which I'm, I'm at that point now. It's like I want to do something creative because I've been doing a whole lot of a stagnant stuff lately, uh, or it's going to benefit you both. And, and then you go, you go and do something for free, but yeah, free, free is going to always be, no matter how much money you make, free is always going to be an option because it should be an opportunity for you to get into some circles or, or, you know, you might know a hairstylist that owns four boutiques. Hey man, I'll do, I'll do you know, your main boutique first for free. And then you still got three more to make money off of. And then that fourth one will come back around when it's time to take pictures again. So now you got four new clients as opposed to zero. Um, you just got to think about some stuff like that. Yeah. All right. So now um, I'm going to toss it over to you. And you could give me give us your uh, three uh, points on marketing. And then after that, we'll jump into uh, you guys, uh, because you are part of this interview as well. So please drop your questions, uh, in the chat. Um, make sure you put the question, um, the word question, or you could put the question mark in front of the question. So I know it's a question and I will, you know, get to it and we'll ask, uh, Antoine and, you know, get some answers to it. All right. So, yeah. And, and I think I'm going to, I'm going to start a little differently because I saw a question that would lead me into to my first point okay but the question the question was when i said that uh people don't respect you where you live um and somebody said well how do you, how is that so or how do you know that or something like along those lines um uh, this this is this is what I'm, I'm saying about that it's not that i'm not saying that people are gonna be like oh that's ernesto or that's jones nah i don't, I don't respect it i'm gonna say they have a less respect for your grind because they see you all the time it's just it's just people would just get comfortable with you or, you know, for the most part, I mean, family is another thing that will kill your business, which I'm kind of happy that I don't have that much family around me for that, for that particular reason is that, you know, family and friends will automatically assume that, you know, you should be shooting for free or you should be ho hooking them up and all that. So when I say people respect you, at least where you lay your head out, that's because they're most comfortable with you. So, I mean, I've known Joan for 30 years, you know what I'm saying? I know him when he's a little baby, you know what I'm saying? He's going to hook me up, and that's not necessarily... Those aren't the people that are going to go to war for you and going to tell people about you because they're so comfortable with you that they they don't realize that they're not really respecting you anymore because you're just like brother or cousin or friend. or We've been cool for so long that, you know... So that that's helped me in Fayetteville. So now, I, I leave Fayetteville. I've been gone almost a year and a half now. Now when I go back, I make more money in Fayetteville. I still make more, the most amount of my money in Fayetteville. And for the last year, I've only come to Fayetteville either a week, because I still have my apartment and everything there. But it's either a week or now I'm down to three days. So I'm down on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I come in town and I'm like overloaded. I did 12 photo shoots in three days. Wow. And it should have been, it should have been like 14. But I, I did 12 photo shoots in three days when I was in Fayetteville because now that I'm gone, the respect level has increased a little bit more because I'm not accessible as I was. Uh, I'm here every day. People see me running around town all the time. They know, oh, that's Jones, so they forget about me. But now that I'm not in town all the time. Now, oh, when, when are you going to be in town? I need to book you. Cool. That's no slight on them. It's just I, people are just comfortable with you where you are. Um, so when you start branching out to other zip codes, you move, come back, and all, you'll see the difference. And I, I totally see it because, I, I mean, I still make – 
more money in Fayetteville than I do in Atlanta. And I'm only there three days a month. So 27 other days where I'm either out of town or in Atlanta, I make less money still than those three days where I'm in Fayetteville. So that leads that leads into my first point when I talked about my the product. Your product is the absolute, and we touched on it earlier, your product is the absolute number one uh, thing that you always should have on point. Your product is everything. And I mean your product as in you and your product as in whatever you're outputting. I do my thousand percent best to put out the best, absolute, positively astonishing pictures I possibly can. I, I don't post all the time. I don't, I'm not posting 45 pictures a day. I don't even post one a day. I post the best work for that, you know, that shoot or whatever, and I move on. And I present myself in a way that people can't say, Jones trying to sleep with all the models. Jones is rude. Jones is mean. I'm part of my product. Um, so I say laugh, giggle, take good pictures and go home. I mean that. You know, I have a relationship, so I'm not lingering around a whole bunch of females. Uh, I don't want to get the wrong impression. I don't touch anybody's female model. Uh, and, and for, a, you know, a good eight years, I wasn't even at photo shoots by myself. Like, I always had a makeup artist or hairstylist or somebody friend or something like that. I, or hairstylist would say, man, I'm about to leave, Jones. I'm done with hair. I'm like, no, you're not going anywhere. I don't want to be in a room with a female model or a female client by myself whether they're married or not, because I just didn't want to put myself in that position that they could say I did this or I did that or we're looking at each other all weird um, and it's awkward. Um, now, I mean, I'm almost 13 years in, so now it's kind of, you know, I'm, I'm, I buffered myself over you know, a period of 12 years. So now it's kind of like, well, Jones tried to touch me, really? So in 13 years, he's never tried to, you know, sexually harass any model. And then all of a sudden you were the one. I mean, so I feel a little bit more comfortable uh, being by myself uh, on shoots um so you always have to look at your product uh you and your product are one and the same you put out the best um again with your product if you aren't good at something i.e marketing editing uh delivery wrapping stuff up i mean some people they, they have a business they're just not good at wrapping stuff man get a kid get another adult or somebody to wrap up the stuff so your your presentation looks good whatever you don't do Link up with somebody that can do it, and then you're good. And that just leads to my next point. Uh, relationship building is still in, in your product. Uh, we want, you know, I think that's probably one of the biggest parts of my business is the relationships I build with other people. Uh, and I give them credit for it. You'll never, ever see me post a picture on social media that didn't have everybody involved on there. And, and, and that's, that's, for, that's one for credit and respect. But that's also two for marketing. So if me and Ernesto did a shoot, he's the model. I'm the photographer. We got hair, makeup, wardrobe, accessories. Your girlfriend's there. I tagged everybody that was there. So you'll see some posts when I used to have a one photo shoot, one picture. It might be 10 people tagged on one picture. Everybody feels a part of the team. Everybody's respected for the work. But guess what? I have 5,000 people on my Facebook personal page. Ernesto has 5,000. That's 10,000. Sue, the makeup artist, has 5,000. That's 15,000. Johnny, the hairstylist, has 5,000. That's 20,000. So instead of now I just posted one my picture and only my 5,000 people seeing it, now we have 20,000, 40,000, 50,000 possible people that can see my picture. And that's huge. Um, that, that's way bigger. And that expands your circle of influence like exponentially. So I tagged everybody. If your boyfriend was holding the light, I would tag them in the picture. They're happy that they get tagged. I tagged the makeup artist, accessories boutique, shoe person, nail tech, person that fixed the hair, person that did the hair, the hair company. Like I'm tagging everybody because I'm building a relationship that I respect your work. You respect mine, whether I see you or don't see you, or I know who you are, or don't. You know, I'll ask the model, hey, who took who did your hair? All oh, such and such. Okay, I know her. I'll tag her as well. Because I want that relationship there. I want people to know I respect them. They should respect me. Um, and we're gonna keep growing. And then going off your product. Um, the kind of next bubble and product for our, our first one is a uh, continual education. Again, if you ever think you've arrived, that's when you lose the most. Um, as a teacher, I used to have to go to continuing education every year, once a quarter, all that. Same thing with photography. You know, you got all, you know, you got YouTube tutorials, you got WPPI, you got uh, Professional Photographers of America, all these places where you can go get learn more or at least 
get a refresher on something you think like, I think I need to go back to a lighting class um, and just make sure that I'm not missing any steps when I'm lighting. But you always have to be learning, especially when we consider technology. I mean, technology changes every five seconds. So if you're not staying up to date with that, you know, one of these 18 year olds is going to pass you by because they can they can edit. They can edit like crazy. So, I mean, photography, photography is used to be like 80 percent photography and 20 percent editing. Now it's like. 40 percent photography and 60 percent editing because, you know, people can manipulate photos. That's just something that I just don't want to do. Like I, I pride myself on taking the best possible picture I can in camera and then once I get to post processing then it's not nearly as complicated I'm, I'm trying to get the best picture I possibly can because I hate editing I, that's the worst part about the job is editing I don't want to be sitting I'm a people person I want to make people happy I want to make people smile so staring at a computer for 10 hours straight like I did yesterday to edit pictures all day is not really something that I care to do so I need to make more money so I don't have to do that or I need to do better taking the picture so that I don't have to edit as much um, and then the last thing as far as the product, you know, an, another step that I skipped, well, I didn't necessarily say I skipped, but, you know, business credit or personal credit can definitely help you out. Um, when you're talking about financially, when you want to move to the next segment of your business, um, it's a lot easier when you've already established yourself. So do your business right the first time that helps with your processing. So incorporate or, you know, I would recommend an LLC or a corporation. It might be a little bit more on the tax end, but. You know, you get sued and they're not coming to take your car or your personal your personal product. You know, if something happens. That's the company's fault and not yours. As you know, Antoine Dwayne Jones is getting sued for losing somebody's wedding pictures or whatever. Um, and then once it comes down the line, you start talking about business credit and you can level up You know, if you have that business credit. So that's the first one right there um, off a quick trip is this product product base. Um, and again, we could talk about some of this stuff forever. Number two is technology. Again, you have to stay on the technology curve. Again, I went from, I never had regular business cards ever. I had clear business cards. I had, um, I went from clear business cards to a, a different version of clear business cards to 3D cards. Um, and that goes, I mean, I just want, again, when we talk about the product, the visuals and all that, people, you know, I wanted to be number one and I wanted the people to say, oh man, this is Jones. So what, what could we do to stay on number one? And you, you stay ahead of the technology curve, whether that be Instagram, Twitter, you know, what are the trends are going on, on social media? Uh, what new apps are out? So I go business cards, you know, whatever is technologically advancing your career, like uh, it's an iPhone app called Pocket Suite. Man, you could save your life. And I, I never thought you had to do this because I'm the type of person Ernesto, we got an appointment at 3 o'clock tomorrow. I'm going to be there. You don't have to tell me at you know noon the day before and then noon the day of that I have a 3 o'clock appointment. You know, I'm going to be there because I put it in my phone. I'm prompt. But everybody's not like that. So I found an app called Pocket Suite. You can put all your clients in there. Uh, it'll you know, set an appointment. You can take payments through it. You can send reminders through it. So now you start losing less money because people have forgotten that you had an appointment. Oh, man, I forgot. I'm that stone, man. Oh, man, I'll catch you later. Oh, uh, that's not really cool. Now you got to, am I going to keep your retainer? If you charge one, which you should, uh, are you going to reschedule them? Because now you reschedule them. That's taking money, future money away from you because that's less time that you have. So stay ahead of the technology. You can do that stuff with Google. Google has all kind of great stuff now. Google Drive, Google Apps, you know, Google Forms. So you got people filling out stuff so you get all the right information. Um, your website should be on point. You know, what, what's the best tech in your field? Are you staying up with that? You know, I want the new Nikon camera. So I got to, you know, put some coins in my piggy bank to get some of that stuff. Uh, you know, what, what we got now, Go, y'all, you're shooting with Godox and all that. I'm still lugging around my big old Alien Bs. Um, but technology is, is making it more convenient to do more things. Um, and then your apps and all that, which I discussed. So technology is a, is a big component of any business right now. What what technology can make your, your life easier, whether it be customer relationship management. So now you got a program that tells you, you know, you did a wedding last year. You don't you ain't going to remember when um, when that client's anniversary is. But 
your 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 software is going to tell you, hey, they got an anniversary come up. So now you can send an anniversary card or, hey, y'all got any babies yet? You can make it real funny. I'm like, yo, where the babies at? Is there time for maternity pictures yet? They're like, no, we don't got no baby pictures yet. We ain't having no babies because we're trying to work. But then we're like, oh, but we do got this office party we may need you for. You're just staying in people's minds. Um, so I say you always have to follow up your email uh, platforms, you know, get get that going on. Um, it, it was a really, really big point on follow-up that I just can't remember right now, but your follow-up game got to be strong um, because you will you will get more clients from following up with them. And I'm sure that that point will hit me in a second when I'm talking about follow-up. But, oh, yeah, I knew it was. Um, every person that calls me, I save their number in my phone. Every last person. So, and I don't care if they call me for a quote, or they call me their their customer, or they call me for any any reason that business related. I'm saving their number because guess what? It might be three years, and this happened to me like three months ago. I talked to this lady one time on the phone. She lived in Myrtle Beach. I saved her number. She called me. I said, "Hey, what's up, Ernesto?" She said, "Oh my God, you remember who I was? Yo, I got this gig. Guess what?" I didn't remember who the heck she was. I have no uh, earthly idea who she was. But I saved her number and I put little notes in there. This is Mary Johnson calling from Myrtle Beach. I put everything in my phone. Myrtle Beach preacher. So, hey, what's going on with your church down there in Myrtle Beach? She's like, oh, my God, how does this dude remember this from a conversation we had for 30 seconds four years ago? I didn't. But look at, look at, how, look at how far that took me into booking that gig because it was personal. He remember who I was. He's so awesome. I can't believe he remember me. Guess what? I'm booking a client because of something that simple. They remember who they think I remember who they were. I don't even I've never even met the person before, but they think I remember who I am. They're all comfortable now. Now we're talking business. Nobody else remember who they were. They didn't even care to put the number in the phone. You know, and I get that all the time. Man, I know I talked to you maybe like three years ago. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, what's up, John? He's like, man, yo, dude, you like, you like crazy memory. Like, how do you remember all that stuff? I'm like, yo, how's the kids going? Or what, yo, know, how's it, you know, whatever note I put in there, you, you, you play guitar in Atlanta. I do that with everything. And that helps me to find people on my phone, too. If I'm looking for a makeup artist in Fayetteville, all I got to do is click makeup artist Fayetteville, and then all the lists will come up for my contact list. So that's just order business. That we use technology to our advantage. Everybody's all, always plugged in their phone. How are you using that to better your business? I can pull up 50 photographers in Fayetteville area just by clicking Fayetteville photographers in my contact list and all of them come up. And I can say, Ernesto, I got a gig. I ain't going to be able to make it. I'm already double booked. Can you take it from me? Yeah, cool. Got it. Now we're friends and maybe you remember me the next time. So definitely use technology. I'll put a little spin on there. I'll give you guys a heads up and I'll tell you my spin on Beacon technology real quick. You can take it for what it's worth. If you want to contact me for you know after this is over with, please do. But um, there's this thing called beacons. And I was like, really, really, I try to stay with technology, but this one just really wasn't hitting me at first. It was like, but I get I get advertised to all day. People want me to sell prepaid legal, legal shield, Mary Kay, uh, ISO T. Um, they know, they see that, you, and I'm, I'm sure, Ernesto, you probably get it too because you have such a big platform that people always want you to sell stuff because they know that you are always in front of people or you have a platform, you have followers, so they want to sell you something so you can sell it because they can make money too. Um, so it was about 10 people that tried to get me on this proximity marketing, which is, I don't even know if I have my keys. Uh, hold on one second. So here we go. We got these little beacon things. They're little keychains. You turn it on and everybody within a thousand, or within a hundred yards gets a little soft notification if you have Android. 50 bucks a month I pay for for the little thing. And people are like, oh, you pay 50 bucks a month for that? And I'm like, yeah, um, it's no biggie. Uh, and I'll tell you my pros and cons on it, and then you can decide for yourself. You can hit me up because I don't, I don't really sell stuff like that. Um, you know, I try not to sell much stuff. But I'll give you my con first. Technology has seasons. This is one of those those products that has a season. I only see like two years max before everybody gets these joints and then they're out of, you know, they're out of the, I wouldn't even tell photographers in my market that I use this thing. But nevertheless, you're sitting down at Panera Bread or Starbucks, you clicking on, you go to the mall, you clicking on, go to the movies, clicking on, 
everybody's going to get a 40 character um, advertisement from you and it takes them to your website or your Instagram or whatever. Boom. That's big. You ain't even doing nothing. For 50 bucks a month, I'm going to get one customer that's going to pay for that. Even if I get a one hour booking, it's going to pay for that three times over. So it's a good investment to me. Is, I just know that. Is it Extreme Punch? Is that the name of the company? No, uh, I, I forget what the exact company is. I have to I have to look it up because I mean you really don't even really deal with the company. Uh, you just once you once you get it, you know, it auto drafts and you can change it and do all that. And and once they get iPhone, I think you know once iPhone is added to the platform, then you know you got two two years before everybody has it. But you should be making money off of it before then. Um, somebody asked me about it. I said no for ten times. The the ten person that asked me, I said okay, tell me. What, what amount of traffic you get and show me the money. Like, if you're making money off this thing, it's doing everything you said it's going to do, then show it to me. She showed me, what, you know, her little checks. I was like, cool. Um, so I know that, hey, if I just get one customer a month from it and I'm not doing anything but clicking it on, then that's, that's, a, that's a win for me. You know, one cut. Now, if I start getting 20, 30, I start sending my daughter to school with it. She got one. My, my, my girlfriend's daughter to school with it. She got one. And then I go to wherever I go. That's three. Three advertising. When we talked about advertising, that's three ways to advertise, and we're not even doing jack. I don't have to talk to anybody. If they they swipe down, look at their soft notifications there, they click on it. Then you know they go to my website. Boom! It's a possibility for a potential client for fifty bucks a month. That's one of the cheapest forms of advertising you're going to get. Is fifty bucks a month. I mean, you can spend that on one ad in Facebook or Instagram. So fifty bucks a month is is a you know is a smart advertisement for now. Not Two, three years from now, when everybody has it, then I would say just trash it, go ahead and cancel it. But for right now, you got two to three years to use proximity marketing. I think the company is royalty. That's the one I use. Uh, you know, if you want, you want more information, you can inbox me or whatever. But I, I definitely wouldn't tell everybody in your market that you got it because you only got a two-year window. So I haven't, I haven't told any photographer in Atlanta. Uh, I haven't. You're the first photographer in Fayetteville um, that. That I've told about it. One other one told me about it. But I told him no because he was like the first person that told me about it. I said no. Um, but stay ahead of technology. And then the last point I'll make and we can answer all these questions is uh, diversifying. Uh, once you get stable in whatever business you're doing, Mary Kay, photography, chef, you need to diversify. There, There's almost no, I don't know any business owner right now that's making it doing just one thing. Now, I will say this because my, my girlfriend gets on me about this. I will say make sure, absolutely sure, that whatever ventures you do to diversify are directly connected to what you do and you love to do. Uh, so now I love to take photography. I like to eat. I like to travel. So we, we merge you know, photography with, with vacation. So now we're doing photo tours. So now we can take 20 people to like we took 20 people to Jamaica. Not only did we get the vacation, we got photo shoots in really cool places. But I enjoyed all that um, for basically free. Um, so but that's another form of income that we can do and enjoyment because I've attached that to something I already enjoy doing. Uh, same thing with uh, a lot of the other projects I'm connected to magazine stuff. Again, if I'm going to do something free. It, how's it going to benefit me if I'm shooting celebrities now or. You know, and that's a big word down here, celebrity photographer, celebrity wardrobe stylist. I don't care if you call me the janitor, as long as it's beneficial to me. But moving toward knowing exactly what I want to do and keeping up with trends helps me to diversify. So now I'm going from I went from regular industry size models in 2018. I'm going to plus models. That is the biggest industry right now in photography is plus modeling. Unless you're just fully established in fashion as far as you know, a million dollar or you know, hundred thousand dollar photographer. Look at the trends. Plus modeling is growing. There are no plus model photographers really in my area. That's something I did the research on. I'm diversifying into that. Um, and then you know, making sure that uh, I continue to build relationships and uh, and grow from there. So I'm always trying to meet new people. I'm always trying to show people my work. I'm always trying to work with different people so I can diverse. So they'll bring you into projects that you might never have. I've been into because you you build relationships with people. Like you know, one of my clients is uh, I, I took pictures for her um, her son's PV team, but she's a, a marketing manager, so she's working with with the doctor's office. And now we're going to be able to take pictures of a doctor's office just because we diversify and we start working with people. So 
commercial photography is on the rise. You know, for me, um, that's just something that because fashion. I mean, depending on who you are or the season, fashion photography could be lucrative or it could not be. And then the last thing, uh, my point on diversi- diversifying is once you get to a point where you're settled, get you a nonprofit organization, not only for the tax benefits, and the, but goodwill goes just as far as advertising. Um, when people see you're doing good in the community, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll gravitate toward you. So 2018, we're working on uh, Fit Kid Fresh. That is like our kind of like fashion play on uh, the NFL's play. 60 you know all the kids are stuck in their phones or they're stuck on on uh video games they don't really exercise anymore like i got a teenager that doesn't really exercise at all i'm trying to get her out to do more so my nonprofit is going to focus on doing cool stuff and doing stuff that now i can mentor you know little boys from age 10 to 18 we'll take pictures we'll do stuff i got a cool little merit badge program it's going to be like bow tie so when they level up to the next level or they, they get some positive uh thing in the community or at school, then they'll get a bow tie. It's like their merit badge. They'll get a different color bow tie, a different color tie or something like that. So I can teach them about, you know, wardrobe, teach them about being a man, help them on their time of need, and still get them to do active stuff. Like, we're going to play laser tag. No, we're, we're playing games all the time. It's like, no, I wanted to get you active. You can do all kind of cool stuff. Like go play basketball, go play flag football, laser tag, go camping. You know, I know us people ain't necessarily big on camping, but Trying something new and being around different people um, is good. So that goodwill aspect of uh, your business could go further. That's why a lot of, you know, all these major corporations have, you know, their little nonprofits connected to them because they understand that. And you can get more, you know, you can get money from several different ways for a nonprofit, but the tax benefits and the goodwill by itself helps you grow. So that's it. We could talk about marketing for the next 10 years and still barely touched the surface. So, you know, anybody can always contact me and I know we're going to get into this question and answer section. So, um, we will definitely do that. I see James Paris is talking about the beacons. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, and get people on, on some of that stuff. So what questions do you, do we have lined up right now? So before we jump into those questions, I'm going to break away here for a minute. Um, so I just want to talk really quickly about uh, our photo walk uh, with myself and Photo Me Ike that we have in on February 27th. Um, if you guys haven't, uh, well, what I would say, if you guys are going to WPPI, or even if you're not going to WPPI, you can just fly out for that one day. Um, you can fly for that one day to attend this photo walk slash photo shoot. Um, on the photo walk and photo shoot, we're going to be covering posing, lighting, uh, composition, talking about gear. Um, so we're going to have an amazing model there. Um, so if you are coming out, you know, join, um, join up for the photo walk and, you know, we'll have an, um, a great time. Um, so please go ahead. If you haven't already, um, go ahead and purchase uh, your ticket to join uh, myself and photo me Ike on February 27th in uh, Las Vegas, uh, Nevada. All right. Um, I think tickets are dirt cheap with respect to just flying out there for the day. So even if you don't want to attend WPPI, you could definitely fly out for that day just to attend the workshop. And that is all I have to say about that. So now we're going to transition and go to uh, the questions that you guys have. So James, just earlier, I know you don't have a question there, but earlier in the initial broadcast, yes, you're spot on, and I think you know what I'm talking about. Um, so one of the questions that James had, and we already addressed it, but I'll just read it just so we know, just so you know, James, that I saw it um, and, and I didn't bypass it. Um, so one of the questions that you had was, if you were just dropped in a new city what would be your first steps to get in business building uh, clientele so we kind of already addressed that early on in the broadcast so i would think that would be um i think we could um, move on from that question so the other question i think uh you opened um and answered this question um Antoine, when you were going on, uh, when you were talking about your three points and that question was from stephanie adele adele 
Um, can you explain more behind people respect you less uh, where you lay your head and do you have advice on how a photographer can fight through that possibility um, so we already addressed that so Stephanie if you don't feel like we addressed that question obviously just drop a comment down below and well drop a comment in the chat box and we'll get to it again uh, so scrolling down here let me see what else we have here um, as far as questions so do, 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 scrolling scrolling uh, do, do, let's see and sorry guys I'm looking for the question and the question mark um, so if I bypass your question that's because I didn't see the question mark or the question um, so let me see here I think there's a question here from creative vision um, I understand that you may uh, I understand that you maybe should not post before pictures in before pictures in portfolio but I think insta story is a good way to show that you are a human friendly and think like that do you agree so I guess um, to sum up um, what he's trying to say here uh, oh and um, Antoine while you move around the, the mic on your thing uh, I got you. oh yeah moves around as well uh, so I think what he's trying to say here, I think your point where you were talking about um, not showing uh, your edited images um, in public. Um, so what he's saying here with Instagram stories and I guess Facebook stories and um, Snapchat and all these other platforms where you can show, um, you know, um, a little bit of different, a little bit of a connection with, I guess, with your subscribers um, or followers by showing them a little bit of behind the scenes of what's going on with like right. Insta story. So you're saying, do you agree with that or, or not? Yeah, I, I definitely do. And, and again, that's, that's another reason why I need to diversify a little bit is because I'm usually by myself. Um, so a lot of that, a lot of that stuff is a little harder trying to take a picture. Then you want to do something behind the scenes or something like that. Now behind the scenes from a camp, a cell phone is totally different than behind the scenes. Uh, or you're posting unedited pictures. Uh, I'll do little boomerangs and stuff like that. And I will say this. I, I would recommend that you not bombard people with the whole photo shoot on Facebook Live or, or Insta Story or whatever like that, because then they're not going to really be interested in the pictures if they've already seen the whole entire photo shoot 100 times before you post a picture. Uh, so I'll give people a little snippet. You want to give people uh, what you know, what what the uh, moms always say to the daughters. You want to you want to give people something that's going to going to spice up their interest, you know, if you give away the whole cow, then you know nobody's gonna want to buy the milk. So, give them a little taste. I'll do a little boomerang and show something, or I might not show the whole outfit or something like that. Or I'll show a quick, real quick zip. But I'm not gonna. I'm I'm definitely not gonna post unedited pictures. But yeah, just a little quick zip. But people absolutely know it's a cell phone capture uh, is different than posting unedited pictures that you chose to post. You know, unfiltered, unedited, you know, uncropped. That's a totally different ballgame. Yeah. So Gerard Clark is asking here, uh, what camera and gear does Dwayne use? It's not related to marketing, but I guess it's a fun photography question. I guess. Right. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm still, I'm like behind the eight ball on a few things, but I'm, I'm still old school on aspect of, and, and that's what makes me a little weird is because I probably pull off some pictures that I technically shouldn't be able to pull off, but I, I've done a lot of, uh, I love lighting. I love shadows and all that. So I shoot mainly with the D7, I mean the D810, uh, and I use, still use my Alien B800. Uh, I usually only shoot, well, I'm usually outside because I love the location better than, and I think studio is just boring. Uh, so I use my Alien B800, you know, regular old pocket wizard, pocket wizard on my camera, my Nikon, you know, 70, 200, you know, it's usually my favorite lens that I shoot with and, and I just go from there. So a lot of the stuff that people see me catching action pictures and all that, I'm not even on high speed sync. I'm just catching stuff. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm like, yo, I can't wait to that point where I'm going to be on high speed sync. Cause I'm really going to level up a little bit. And, and that's cool. Again, that's, that's part of the process where I'm taking my time. You know, I'm, 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 I'm gradually getting where I need to go because again, I have to, I have to make sure that, you know, the, the household and the kids are taken care of before I go out and buy, you know, $20,000 worth of new gadgets, but 
Uh, I'm doing okay with what I got, but yeah, I'm definitely probably only operating about 50% of what I'm capable of doing just based on the equipment, one, and two, not having an assistant to hold lights or do this and all that. I'm, I'm doing all that by myself. So what you see mainly for me is, you know, a D810, one Alien B800, uh, and me just getting wicked crazy and trying to figure out some way to make, to stress, stress the point or stretch out every possible aspect of what my equipment can do and that's why i say you don't always need to run out and get the newest hottest thing coming out that doesn't make you a better photographer you uh learning your craft and being the best you can with what you got uh is way better i mean i know people that they're shooting with like d70s and they're they're getting freaking magazine covers um because they've maximized their effort in in that camera's or that equipment's capacity um for what they do so that's what i'm trying to do if you see my equipment you be like oh my god how are you still using that you know my my, my softball is like somebody chewed on it <laughs> <laughs> but you know I'm, I'm excited about some of the but i mean i just you know shot some celebrities you know a month ago with the same beat up old softbox so uh we're gonna maximize it and then once i get to that whole high speed sync where i can get people flying through the air for real and action frozen and blue skies and yeah we'll, we'll you'll see a different level it's kind of like when i went from crop camera to a full frame you 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 know the difference you can feel the difference you can see the difference when when the capability open up so maximize your equipment yeah i think actually you know this question is not related to marketing but it just uh raised one interesting point that i'm going to make and then I'm move forward is that um it's interesting that uh antoine is saying this that you know the equipment that he have is is not like the latest and greatest equipment right uh, but he's making it happen with what he got. So these conversations out there that we generally have, I mean, us photographers in the industry that just talk about, hey, you know, the latest this just came out. I got to go get this or this, this is the latest camera. And, you know, this other camera that you have is just old and outdated and, and whatnot. Just basically whatever camera you got, whatever equipment you have, you know, as a photographer, you should be able to create um any type of amazing image that you want to create with the gear that you have. You just have to make sure that you maximize it to the fullest potential. As a, I guess a business person, full-time uh, business person, sometimes you don't have the luxury of upgrading to the latest and greatest stuff. You know, you just have to make sure that you eat and you keep a roof above your head and stuff like that. So um, I would say prioritize your, your, um, your education photography education over gear gear is should be like secondary if you could get it you could afford it go for it right but you know prioritize your education your photography education over your your gear and that's all i'll make about that and let's move on to the next question um so stephanie adele and stephanie i'm sorry if i'm butchering your last name so i'll just say your first name because at least i can pronounce that (laughs) so Question, is it beneficial to having some of your work printed or maybe a old school traditional portfolio for marketing purposes? Uh, I, I don't know. I think if you're, if you're newer, then you need to have print, some stuff printed. Um, we're in a digital world, but some clients, especially if you're new, just want to see what you have. And even I'm getting back to that, I think the issue I have is I. Like, once you're in the industry so long, it's like, what are you going to put in your portfolio? It, it'll probably take me two months. Like, I got, you know, I got an award, so I, they told me to pick out the 10 top pictures that I wanted to show or to showcase. And it took me, like, a month to try to pick because I'm going to butcher it. I'm going to butcher every picture I ever took. Go, uh, nah, mm, uh, uh, nah. But that's how we grow. Like I said, I'm, I'm never satisfied. So I edit fast for that reason because I would love this picture today. I edit it real fast, and tomorrow I go, man, that's trash. Like that, look at her foot or angle or eye or something like that. So, yeah, I think you should have something in print. Like I'm one of these weird photographers. I've taken pictures for almost 13 years, and I don't have one picture up in my house at all. Uh, it's different, uh, but having a good working portfolio will make you get better. Um, it will it will make you get better because you'll look at it and be like, man, why? Mm-mm. I need to get something else in here because this is not my best work. And, and I don't ever want you to think that you ever had your best work. You should always be thinking this is not my best. 
because that'll make you push harder. And then all these people that are chasing behind you won't catch up because you're always pushing, 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 pushing. So if you see it, cool. I just recommend if you're going to do something in print, do it the best possible way you can. Again, going off of some of our points. Don't go to Walmart or, or CVS or Costco, get some crap in print, you know, get your professional print lab, get it in a nice binder, you know, make it, make the presentation amazing because people are going to judge you. You know, you want the best print quality. We've been printing on metallic paper for as long as I can remember. I haven't used a matte or a glossy paper in probably eight years. Uh, we, we've been printing on metallic paper. The way I shoot and which, which shadows that I use, it makes all the images look kind of 3D. So we don't, we, we tell our clients when, we, you know, when they, when they get large prints from us, they're like, don't, don't, don't get a frame that has glass in it because it'll just dummy down the picture. You know, take the glass out, put the picture in there, mount it. If it gets dusty or something, you just use a you know, dry cloth, wipe it off, and it, it'll look so much better without glass. Um, and we go from there. So, again, that's on the whole research, staying ahead of technology, knowing your product, and knowing what your customers like. But I, I want a lot of customers just off of, of the, the print paper that I use because they've never seen metallic paper before. And it, it looks 3D to them. I haven't either. So maybe I need to go print on some metallic paper myself. It definitely. That Kodak metallic is like amazing, man. Especially on anything with textures or any action, it's going to look 3D. You know, it's going to bounce off the page. Vivid colors are going to look amazing. Yeah. Uh, so James Parrish um, is asking here. Uh, James, pa James Parrish actually is the dude, man. He's a, he's a good guy. Uh, so yeah. basically, it's like he's asking, how did you shoot 12, photo, uh, 12 shots or shoots in three days? What's your schedule like? Oh, man, let, let me see if I can pull it up real quick. I mean, I basically, I basically schedule all day long. But um, Friday Friday was like three shoots. No, Friday was four shoots. Saturday was five. And then Sunday was three. Um, most of them were one hours, but I had a couple, two or three hour ones in there. But yeah, Saturday, I'm usually like locked in the studio all day. You know, I'll, have, I'll take some time out on Friday and Sunday to make sure that I spend some time with my kids because my son's still stay in Fayetteville. But, you know, we'll, we'll camp out at the studio. They'll, they'll have their little, uh, Xbox running in the, back, in the, in the, in the uh, office and they'll do that and I'll be shooting and we'll play around, go to lunch, come back, shoot some more. You know, shoot all the way up to dinner and then we'll go out to dinner um so it's just prioritizing because i still have to be a dad too um so even with all that you know an hour shoot or a two hour shoot is cool you get three or four of them in a day and i'm i'm beat when i get back to atlanta so that usually that monday when i get back to atlanta i'm usually crashed out um but you know we i do whatever it takes to to win because i mean i'm, I'm only in fayetteville three days out of 30 and, and you do whatever you got to do to eat so do whatever we got to do to eat so the next, uh, this is not a question, but I just wanted to highlight it because um, Marco Castro, uh, he was basically agreeing with you with respect to, um, he was saying, great point on traveling. He was saying that he makes more money outside of, I guess, his home base, which is um, Miami. Uh, so he makes more money outside of Miami uh, by traveling. So right. he's saying, reach out to clients outside your area. So basically, yeah. he's agreeing with you. Got you, man. Once you once you hit other zip codes, man, your name will follow you. And then you'll start getting to the point where people are like, yo, man, you're everywhere. You'll go home. Or I'll go to Fable. I'll go come back to Atlanta. And people are like, yo, you're everywhere, dude. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah, I was in Charlotte at a gig, man. And somebody was talking about you. Cool. You know, I, I spent time building a brand that you know, I want to be a household name. I want people with my, you know, when they're thinking photography, I'm in, I'm in their, their, their thought process. So, again, like you said, you think I'm everywhere. I'm not really everywhere. It's just I work with so many people that are from everywhere that it makes it seem like I'm just, you know, just everywhere all the time. Uh, I'm usually either in Fayetteville or Atlanta, but it seems like I'm everywhere because I, some people travel in from Charlotte or Alabama or some people come from Virginia or Raleigh or Durham or something like that. And I'm working with them. So now it seems like I'm just everywhere. Um, but that's when we talk about relationship building. Yeah. So James Paris is asking here, Dwayne, um, are you going to WPPI? I am not going to WPPI. I um, I got so much going on, uh, but I think today you're going to be there. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be working for uh, 
Holler Cheering Dance Magazine because that's the same day Battle of the Bands is here in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So that weekend, that weekend, I'm kind of this. No, you. What is it? February or is it January? February. February. Yeah, that that 28th I'm, or that that weekend I'm booked, so I can't go. Um, but again, there are, there are a host of ways. I would definitely recommend WPPI, uh, PPA, any training sessions that they have that you can get to. You know, on whatever topics that you want to grow in, go. Uh, also, a tip, and this is probably one. I mean, how many photographers are on here? I'm a, uh, look at this is one of the times I hope no Atlanta photographers or favorite photographers are on there. But this is one of the tips I promise you. This is what changed my whole photography career, and I don't say it much. But there's a when when I first started, it was a DVD series, um, and the, the company's called PhotoVision. Write that down, because if you, especially if you're a new photographer, this would change your life. I promise you, you could. And I'm going to give you my website, AntoineDwayneJones.com. So when you say, oh, my God, Jones, I can't believe this really, really worked, you can send me a message and say, yo, this is like the dopest joint ever, because I promise you this is going to change your life, even if you're a seasoned photographer, because it, it totally changed my career. And this is what happened. This is like the light switch for me. I had a, I went to a, I went to a PPA event or something like that, and uh, – I saw this thing. I didn't buy it when I got there. When I got home, I did a little bit of research. Called PhotoVision. It, at that time, it was a DVD collection. They sent you a DVD every other month. It was like 50 bucks for the year. They sent you a DVD every month. Cool, right? We've all seen some DVDs or some YouTube tutorials or whatever like that that show you, you know, different aspects of photography. Yes. This one was a little bit different. They have some of the best industry pros in the world doing these tutorials but not only that they showed it to you from like um from a from a bts standpoint all the video recording was bts so you would see every the, the way the photographer set up the lighting how they captured it what camera they used but not only that here's a kicker they showed you the settings scroll across the screen during the shot so now, like, oh, this is how I get this blue sky. He was saying, oh, you're you're at you're at f14, uh, ISO one, you know, one over two fifty, um, with your seventy two hundred at one hundred and five millimeters. That totally changed my whole photography career because now I had a better understanding. Okay, I want to make the sky blue. How do I do that? This is what I did. Same thing with the meter. You know, a lot of people run around without a meter. I'm a meter dude. If you don't use a meter, that's cool. And sometimes I can wing it if I'm in studio because I kind of know my studio lighting. But if you're outside or on location, I meter everything uh, because it, it takes all the guesswork out of what you're trying to accomplish, especially with me because I always use shadows. So photo vision will change your entire life. Now it's like DVD based. So you can spend 50 bucks a year or 20 bucks a month or something like that. You can always go back. I mean, I think they were up to like 80 when I 85 or 90 when I stopped like ordering them. But I have them as DVDs, so whenever I get in a slump or something like that or kind of think I need some continual ed, I'll pop in one of those high-fashion DVDs or one of those wedding photography DVDs or one of those portrait photography DVDs and watch it and see, okay, this is what the setting was. This was the three-light setup that they used. This was the angle they had it at. This, they used a reflector underneath. They used a side lighting. I mean, it tells you, it shows you everything and then tells you the setting, so it's no guessing at all. You can kind of mimic those and then use them to whatever – you know, whatever your style is, because you still have your style. Here's an inside tip for you guys. Just an FYI. If you subscribe to Ernesto Sue Photography YouTube channel, you will get that tip too. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, dude, it's like a million dollars. It's a million dollar advice that you're paying 50 bucks for. Like, I mean, somebody's talking about the beacon things and I'll get to all that, but that's a probably even better investment than the beacon thing is to spend 50 bucks on some lifelong photography tips that you can always go back to and you can see it wow uh, that's it you gotta hear for free fellas and ladies subscribe <laughs> yeah <laughs> so hey uh so james oh well james was asking about the ping hd thing so hit up antoine jones on his uh on his um website reach out to him yeah. and he have a conversation with you about that um, yeah um so scrolling through here uh, uh, so <laughs> James is still asking about the same thing about the beacon. So reach out, reach out to to Antoine. He'll give, he'll give you the details on that. 
Absolutely. Uh, Good. I'm just scrolling, making sure I don't miss anybody's questions. By the way, you guys are making some great points, having some great conversations in here. I'm not like, not, well, I am seeing it. So it's not like I'm not seeing it, guys. I am seeing it. I just want to make sure I don't miss any of the questions. So I'm just scrolling through here um, just to make sure. Um, so Gerard was saying, is that a question, but I wanted to just highlight it. Um, I love the fact that you use what you have and don't push people to buy more gear. Um, oh, I guess you're talking about me. So <laughs> I thought it was for you. Sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. Uh, so Gerard, yes, thank you. Appreciate that. Um, so Creative Vision, Clark, is this a question? Let me make sure. Clark, can you guess when I'm using, let me check my work. Uh, I don't know what you mean by that Creative Vision. I don't know if creative vision, if that's your first language, but the question that you have uh, is not is not coming through fully for me. So I'll skip over that for a minute. So if you want to rephrase your question, uh, creative vision, specifically the one around, can you guess what I'm using when you check my work? Uh, yeah, could you rephrase that if you, if you want to answer, answer that question, if you could rephrase it? Um, I see one down here. Uh, from Eric Council, he says, what's a good place to get a physical portfolio? Uh, I'm not sure the question is as far as like the actual prints or the actual portfolio, which is two different ones. Um, but I would say you, know, you have to go with whatever print lab is best for you. I used to use WACC. Um, I use primarily all the Miller's companies now. So I started with MPIX. Then you got MPIX Pro. Then you got Miller's. You decide what level that you want. On that one, that's that's what I use. Um, but I don't, I don't have any problem with WACC. There's other ones out there, uh, other label fo photo labs that you know may offer products or services that you want as opposed to other. I, I love Miller's. Uh, I've used Miller's pretty much the majority of my career, uh, even when I was using WACC. Um, I like both of them. I just Miller's is their, their customer service is pretty on it. Uh, and they're all the prices are pretty comparable. I use something else totally for my sports stuff though, because but you're gonna have to re find out on your own because <laughs> that's that's probably one of my only secrets that I have as far as some of my sports products is that I researched some products for two years before I decided to do them and now I do them and once I go into sports, you know teams and they, they they haven't seen any product like this so I, you know it's a slam dunk for me. Um, I, I've never had a return for a, sport, a sports team. Uh, I've never had a dissatisfied parent because they're like so blown away by the product. And that's what we need to get is we're researching and finding out the best products, staying ahead of the curve and then, you know, going for it. OK, so um, Creative Vision have here a question. How to get how to get first magazine cover? Uh, hang on. There's more to it. Uh, contact them first or do photos and or. Yeah, I think I think English might not be his first language. Right. I want to try it. Any advice? So any advice on trying to get a magazine cover? Um, start with local or regional magazines first. Uh, that's what I recommend. Like, we, I was in Fayetteville. And again, we can diversify, too. You can get really, really good at your craft and just create your own magazine. And that'll open up doors for you, which is what I did at first. I started a Swank Fashion Magazine. Uh, I used that for a platform. I was working for one of my former colleagues. You know, he had a fashion magazine. My man in Raleigh, uh, Damien Proud, he had a uh, crush model magazine. I was shooting for that. So I, w I started getting covers. Um, but I, I wouldn't even, until you feel comfortable with your work, if you feel comfortable with your work, then start going for a magazine. If you, st if you feel like you're still, you're still on a learning curve, you know, tighten your game up, get as tight as you can before you start submitting the magazines because you, know, you could throw yourself off forever by submitting some images that's not really flattering um, for you. Um, so, yeah, start with local and regional magazines first. Every town has them. Some some upstart photographer, some upstart model or, or, or local organization started a magazine. Try to shoot for them. Submit some stuff to them. Like I said, call them up. Network, relationship build. Maybe you start off in the magazine um, and then you end up on the cover. I mean, I think I've done – I put them up, but I think I've done maybe 39 covers in the last three and a half years. Um Good majority of them were local or regional magazines. 
I got a couple of national ones in there. It wasn't, you know, cover covers, but inserts. Um, and that goes a long way when you say, here's my portfolio and your portfolio looks like a, looks like a, you know, a library section and that's cool. And I feel comfortable sending my, my, my professional photographer resume to people now because I mean, you have all these, all these accolades on there and a couple of awards here and there. And it, it, it feels like, like if I sent you my resume, I look bigger than what I am. <laughs> so I'm, I'm ready to send my resume out to people now because I look so much better on my resume than I feel I do in person. Um, so just keep grinding, man. You know, a cover is a cover. As long as it's, it aligns with your brand, doesn't matter how big or small they are. I don't care who it is. I, I still shoot for local magazines, especially if I'm getting paid for it. But I'll shoot for any magazine as long as it aligns with my brand. Yeah, yeah you definitely have a, a better chance of getting a cover on a local magazine, a startup magazine, than you would on any type of national brand. But I think uh, Antoine is correct. Um, I wouldn't even think about, you know, magazine covers or anything like that if your work is, if you feel, not not necessarily right. anybody else, but if you feel like you, you know for sure that your work is not uh, up to par, then probably you just need to work on that first before you even thinking about any other magazine. And, and reach, out, reach out to some people that you trust, like really trust, not friends, not family. I'm talking about like some real good colleagues in the business or, or not even a business, but maybe just do photography, even if they do it for a hobby or whatever. But people that you um, admire um, and reach out to them and say, look, you know, give me your honest feedback on what you think my body of work is. Provide them with a portfolio, maybe a website or something. And just tell them, you know, give me your honest feedback. What do you think about my work? And if they say, you know what, your work is just not there, then you know that you don't need to submit your work to any type right. of magazine. Um, and everybody needs a mentor, dude. And that that's important, too. I mean, we, talk, we talked about this behind closed doors, but I have two mentors. I have one mentor that started me from foundation, you know, Gene Ho is in Myrtle Beach. You know, three, for, three uh, professional studios nationwide. He was like the Atlanta Falcons cheerleaders and all that. So great dude. He's more like, I'll send him something. He's like, that's a great job. You know, he's like, I'm proud of you. That's, that's cool. Then I have my mentor that I'm in the studio with, George Joel, great wedding photographer. He's from the West Coast. I'm from the Midwest. He'll tell me, hey, man, that picture's trash. Now, when I was younger, I might not have accepted that, that, that creative, you know, or that constructive criticism for what it was. I know that this dude loves me like, like we're family. So I don't take it, what he says to heart. I take what he's saying. So he says that's trash. I'm like, oh, anybody else might get butt hurt about it. I'm like, man, it ain't trash, man. You trash. Blah, blah, blah. No, I want to know what, uh, why, why you think it's trash, so I can get better at it. And a lot of people don't have that. And so I don't, I don't get offended. By it. Somebody said my picture's trash. Heck, I probably think it's trash too. But everybody else liked it for a little bit, so I don't get offended by it. I don't like that picture. Her hair is I, okay. Yeah, I feel you. That's just something to work on. Uh, when you get offended by people saying that your work sucks or that that picture is bad or something, that's when you start stop growing. Um, you know, I pick pictures apart. So if you you can inbox me saying, "Man, what do you think about this picture?" I'm going to tell you the truth because that's how my mentors do me. It might not be what you want to hear, and I probably have a little bit more tact than he does, but I'm going to tell you my honest opinion. And ah, what's right there, you know, I, did you work on your your uh, you know, your rule of thirds, you know, what about your composition, lighting, you know, did you see that? She got a pole growing out of her head type thing. Did you take a picture of that? What about your depth of field? Uh, and, and again, that's on you to have done your homework and research to even know what I'm talking about. Because I, I break photography rules all the time. But the only reason I know that they're broken is because I know the rules. Uh, and, and, and fashion, we can break rules a little bit more um, than any other, you know, kind of genre of photography. But if you don't know the rules, <laughs> then you don't know what you're breaking and why you're breaking them and all that stuff. So, again, we, we go back to the continual education. Uh, learn the rules. If you break them, you'll know why you broke them and how you broke them. Uh, but when you get some constructive criticism from a, a photographer that's been in the game for a while, you'll understand what they're talking about. Um, yeah. So, I, I basically stopped submitting to magazine. I don't, I don't really submit my work to magazines anymore. Uh, but, you know, the walk away the takeaway from this uh creative vision is just basically get 
constructive criticism from your colleagues. Um, that's, that's the takeaway. All right, so it seems like we're down to zero questions. Um, so I want to say for the folks out there that, was, that, that joined us, uh, this is an interactive session. I try to have an interactive session. I try to think of it as two guests that I have, you know, I'll uh, guess here on video and then you, you the community as a uh, guest as well. So it's a collective effort of, uh, you know, this interview process. So I definitely appreciate you guys tuning in and, um, you know, raising all these questions because it definitely helps, um, I guess, your understanding because you're asking the questions and it also will help other people that may be, you know, tuning in late, uh, which is after the broadcast is no longer live. And maybe they had the same questions and probably uh, your question helped to answer uh, their questions. So I really appreciate all the feedback that you guys provide on these live, live broadcasts and make it interactive and fun. I definitely appreciate that. So Antoine, what do you got, uh, what do you got going on uh, beyond uh, photography, man? Oh uh, man, we got a few few things going on right now. We're working on. Uh, I'm like lead photographer on this uh, fraternity and sorority magazine that we're looking to launch. It's, you know, it is my Founders Day as well, so I'm a member of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. It's our Founders Day, and uh, we're working on the magazine. It's going to kind of be like the Essence magazine for fraternity and sorority members. So we're really excited about that. Um, it again, we research, we're trying to diversify. We found an untapped market. Same as like the plus model industry here in Atlanta, you know, we found an untapped market. Now it's time to tap into it. Now, the thing with that is, is that we know it's going to be a learning curve in, in time, because if you're the first, if you're the pioneer, everybody doesn't catch on. This is just like the little beacon things. It took me 10 people in probably six months for me to say, OK, this is, might be a good deal. So we're, we're in like we're hunkered down, getting content together for that. I mean, I'm happy to be the lead photographer for it. I'm a fraternity sorority guy, so I know some of the ins and outs. So it's fun for me, but it's also fun to see that, you know, people have a negative uh, negative look on fraternity sorority members. They think all we do is party and beat each other and kill each other, and, and that's it, if you if you are in one. But you, they don't realize uh, just how integrated, especially in the you know, urban community, how integrated these members are. The NAACP chapter presidents, their teachers, lawyers, doctors. Know, chancellors at colleges and all that stuff so just kind of a way for us to uh to enlighten that and but give some newsworthy content um we have a plus model retreat coming in may here in atlanta so we're going to take a friday saturday sunday the 18th through 20th of may and just pamper them give them some tutorials do a really dope photo shoot launch some stuff there which is they don't know what's what what the what we're launching but some really really cool stuff that's coming aboard. And again, we're, I'm using my photography as a platform to help me to get into other things. So you'll see a lot of announcements in the next couple of weeks or months from me as far as some of the, some of the business I work through. And that's another thing, man. Jealousy, jealousy can kill your business. Um, so some stuff, when you diversify, um, you don't need to always uh, tell people that it's you doing it. I'll say that. Uh, I'm part of a few businesses that nobody will ever even know I'm a part of just because once you start getting too big, the people start hating, you know, you get unnecessary hate because people only want to see you succeed, but to a certain point. Uh, so I'm, I have my hands in probably eight or nine things, uh, but I'm just photographer or I'm just, I'm just a little piece of the puzzle because I don't need all the extra stuff that comes with being a Mark Cuban, I don't want to be a Mark Cuban. Uh, I don't, I don't want to be this blah 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 everywhere. And I want, I want to be well off. I want to be able to put my kids through college. I want to help somebody else, kid through college, do some great stuff in the community. But I don't have to be the big wig, uh, CEO dude. I want to just be me, enjoy my life, and uh, and just have fun because I, don't, I don't ever want to, one, price myself out of any market. I want everybody to be able to afford me to a certain extent, but. I, I want to be a part of my community. And now that I'm finally getting to that point where uh, I'm the single dad is OK, then I can start doing more things in the community that I want to do. I heard that. So where can people um, find you um, if they want to uh, follow you? 
Yeah, man. So going back to the marketing thing, uh, I had to take my own advice and uh, I, I changed everything in the last year or so to my name. So we, I had Dwayne Jones Photography and Jones Photography and all this stuff. So everything is Antoine Dwayne Jones, A-N-T-O-I-N-N-E-D-U-A-N-E Jones dot com. Antoine Jones on Instagram. It's Antoine Jones on Facebook. Antoine A.D. Jones on Twitter and, you know, Antoine Dwayne Jones Media is a fan page. So everything aligns. Uh, you want to find me, I'm pretty easy to find. So everybody's coming up with these cool names and all that. And they, they're using their mama's first name and their sister's last name and their daughter's middle name and making some really cool name. Nah, I mean, just keep it simple. It's easier to brand yourself the simpler it is. Um, like McDonald's didn't change their logo a million times or they're not McDonald's with a squiggly line on top and not McDonald's nudes. So, you know, it just keep it simple, as simple as possible. Uh, I think everybody can find me now. So, you know, I'll naturally start moving up the Google ladder just based on upon that. Everything is just the same. Mm, wow. I need to follow that advice. People will be hating on me because of my Joe Pulse uh, Instagram handle. But uh, it's, all, <laughs> all, it's all good. I'll, I'll eventually get around to, to, to uh, changing that. Uh, all right, man. Awesome. I definitely appreciate you uh, uh, basically doing this interview, providing all this information. I'm sure the folks that uh, viewing this, you know, got a lot of information from it. So I definitely appreciate the time that you put in for this interview, man. Oh, no problem at all. Anytime. And again, all y'all folks out there, if you need some business consulting or photography or whatever, y'all just let me know. I'm, you know, I'm connected to you know one of these two iphones 24 7 so i can always help you know. two iphones <laughs> yeah man i got the north carolina i gotta i gotta keep people separated so we got the north carolina and they'll have two different two different carriers because you sprint act like you want to act when they want to act like <laughs> so i always have a t-mobile phone so when i'm traveling if one phone's not no service or something like that i'll make sure i have covered somewhere man it's... my man flint i don't understand why you say true people don't think their names um, could you clarify that? Uh, what do you mean by that? In the interim, um, let me transition here. So, so I just want to say to you guys again, thank you very much for uh, joining this live broadcast. I definitely appreciate it. James, my man, thank you very much for your super chat. I definitely, definitely appreciate that. Um, and I just want to say also, I see my man Flint in there is also making some awesome contribution, helping out the team, um, helping out um, Chris with his um, question about um, the prints and stuff like that. So I definitely see, or Eric, I should say, I definitely see uh, all that collaboration and that help. Um, this is a really, really awesome community and I really appreciate all you guys uh, very much. Um, so with that said, I want to make sure to say, guys, if you did enjoy this video and you got some awesome information from it, please hit that thumbs up button on this video. And when this video is no longer live, make sure you put some comments down below. And even if you did join this broadcast live and the video is no longer live, Go ahead and put some comments on there. Just, you know, help help me out by putting comments on there. Even if it's the same comments you just put in your, in the chat. Go ahead and put some comments on the video. It does help uh, with, uh, you know, the Google and their analytics. So it does help. So if you can help me out there, that would be awesome. Um, and guys, if you uh, did get a lot of information from this video, please share it. Share it with your friends. Share it with your colleagues. Uh, I think... All the information that um, James provided, uh, James, all this information that Antoine provided in this particular uh, broadcast, I think could be applicable not just for, to photographers, but it could be applicable to, applicable to other businesses. So, you know, share it with people, share it with, you know, your friends and colleagues, anyone that's looking to, um, you know, start their business and try to market their business. I think it will help them. And if you got this far in this video and you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, I would say, what are you waiting for? Uh, you got a lot of free information and I'm sure you're going to get a lot more from other broadcasts in the future. And I'm sure you're going to get a lot more information from other videos that we put out here regarding lighting, posing, composition, 
and post-production. So we put all those types of videos out on this channel. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and you will get a lot more awesome content just like this one. All right, I will talk to you guys later and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later, bye-bye.